car time. So we're off to work. It's a beautiful sunny Friday morning. The puppies have got their car bed and their toys to play with. We want to make sure they get lots of doggy socialization so they don't get shy and like poor Figgy Wig. So these guys actually have this nice beautiful car bed stuffed into the seat. And they get to play and ride with and see people and see things. I've got leashes stuffed in here so I can take them for walks. They look pretty happy. Things are a lot different at home with Bogey Gun and with April in her new home. She seems pretty happy and they seem to really like her. <coughs> We've been talking about placing Cricket. The and Cricket's a really good dog too. The only issue with her is she's extremely agile. So she potentially could climb a four or five foot fence. And we have seen her on our four foot high landscaping when she jumps there from a sitting position. So she's pretty agile. Um, she needs a place where she can be, have a really secure fencing situation. I don't like dogs tied out on ropes and I don't really like to have them we don't, I mean, shot colors underground fencing, we just don't allow that with Frenchies. Oh, my little monsters. She said I lost my choo-choo. I gotta go get it. She likes looking out the window. That's Puddin. And Justin's got the whole bed. She says, move over. I'm really enjoying having these two puppies especially this size pudding is we haven't had a Frenchie this size in a very long time and she's she's teeny and it's absolutely perfect I love the size but she's not like a teeny dwarf dog she's like a little perfect teeny Frenchie like our old spicy was they would be surprised if she ends up over I don't know 18 20 pounds but we'll see Hi, Justin. Did you climb out of your bed? He said, I'm out. They will be well-socialized puppies, and ours always were in the past, but it has been a rugged past few years. Okay, so for those of you that don't know any history about us, my husband is 66. I'm just about 60, and uh, we raised Frenchies and some other breeds of dogs we showed dogs for. Uh, I've been showing dogs since I was 16 to crunch the numbers and figure that out. But we had a pretty rough past few years between the aging process with our parents and what we've, we've gone through with them. And you do go through what your parents go through. You go through what your children go through. You go through what your grandchildren go through. But. Um, Four years ago I ended up with a metabolic crisis and that's probably due to the fact that I don't have a thyroid gland technically. Um, in my late 20s I was diagnosed with Graves disease and underwent a massive dose of RAI. I don't even know if they give that dose anymore but it was the dose they give for cancer patients and so that ablated, which means it destroyed my thyroid gland, and then I've been on levothyroxine ever since. And in those days, levothyroxine was not properly regulated, so it could go up and down. The batches, per batch, per dose, could alter significantly and create just terrible problems for people. When you are dose dependent on levothyroxine, it's it would be like giving someone a heart medication and being unable to, it, to properly adjust the dose they were being given. Okay, because literally the thyroid runs every function in your body. <laughs> literally everyone. So it's a nightmare 
when they can't stabilize it. So my life was a roller coaster for like 10, 15 years. They finally started regulating that drug and um, the FDA got involved and started regulating it, which they should have done from day one. And, but anyway, about four years ago, it took a sudden and unexpected drop. We don't know if it was a combination of a supplement that was on or what was happening. We don't really know. I was on a cholesterol reducing supplement. And unfortunately, you know, your liver makes the cholesterol when you don't have a thyroid gland and you are a celiac, your body is making lots of cholesterol as much as it can to help with that T4, T3 conversion. So I've always had a really high cholesterol since that time frame. And it is not likely to go down probably because of that factor. So something messed with my, with that cholesterol which I, my body needed for T4, T3 conversion, and it made a metabolic crisis where my, all my <laughs> electrolytes went out of balance critically, so I ended up in the ER a couple times, and in the, they, they didn't hospitalize me, but the doctor said the only reason they didn't do it was because he felt that I could go home and handle it just by eating so they tell me to eat every two hours all day and all night I just had to keep eating 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 for most people that would be great <laughs> when you're extremely nauseated you can't eat that buddy and unfortunately when your electrolytes are off you can be extremely nauseated so you feel like throwing up all the time and it can also give you diarrhea which adds to the problem so then I had to go on drugs to stop that Hey, you guys have got toys right here. You don't need to be eating that. And uh, it took a year to get that in control. And then I was on, um, basically on the couch for months because my TSH was so, you're gonna call it high if you're medical, but so low. It went so low that I was basically non-functional. Um, and then in the process of trying to bring it up, it went into the hyperzone, and that took over six or eight months to get that back out of the hyperzone, which was, it's great if your heart can handle it because you'll lose a lot of weight and you can eat as much as you want. <laughs> so anyway, we got through that and then Michael ended up with kidney stones and he had like a dozen or more of them. And the VA, um, gave him the option of riding it out by taking drugs and trying to pass them on his own. He's had them before, but this was a huge amount. He got through the kidney stone process and then he started having, uh, he had a heart attack. And so we got him down to the VA and he ended up with a four-way bypass. So in between there, you know, that took a year to get through that process. That was a full year to get through that process. And uh, between everything that you have to do, nursing and home care and dietary changes and exercise and therapy, all of it, it took a year. And uh, it was a long, busy year. So, got that year over with and then my mom ended up with cancer and she was down here in a cancer institute and then doing therapy here in between that Michael's mom had a medical crisis where she nearly died <laughs> with, with a sudden hemorrhage and she had stents put in and a number of things going on and then as soon as my mom got out of cancer therapy, which we were all helping her through that, and she was staying with my grand, or my daughter, her granddaughter, to get through that. Then, my dad, as soon as my mom got home, had a series of strokes, and he had to go into the hospital, and they had to work with him here in the city. So yeah, that's been our year so far, and uh, then when we had the puppies, um, unfortunately, bending over the puppy pens every day, and working extensively with Timmy and stuff, I ended up hurting my back and I got sciatica, 
which I've had before, but I couldn't rest because I had to do puppy care. And so eight weeks of intensive puppy care ended up with pedendal nerve. And if you've ever had pedendal nerve, it makes sciatica look fun. <laughs> pedendal nerve is a nightmare. That is a nightmare. So we're still trying to get back from, we did therapy, went to the chiropractor, that was, didn't help a lot, did acupuncture, that didn't help a lot. Went to two different therapy therapists for um, medical therapy, saw my doctor, and uh, she said, you've got a pedendal nerve injury. So the only place to go from there would be MRI. Um, they said x-rays would be useless and possibly a CAT scan, but we're, you know, I'm just trusting God that that's healing and it is, it is healing. The symptoms are healing. So yeah, it's not all of it's just, you know, getting old. Some of it is getting older, but some of it is, you know, the amount of stress that you live under for a period of time. And uh, it's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting at this age. I told Michael, I would love to just have a week to sit and do absolutely nothing. Just sit in my chair and do nothing. And so this is as good as I get. I normally him ride with him to work and help him with his job. He's back to where he doesn't need a lot of help anymore except with paperwork. But now I get the opportunity to take the puppies and they get to go and they get to see what it's like to be out in public and ride in a car and get used to that activity and noise and motion. So it's a good socialization process. In the meantime, I'm just trying to help my back to heal and we're being <coughs> as good as we can under the parameters we have. And so, yeah, we did, um, we did want to do a reduction on our dogs just to get the amount of work down and less bending for me, less work for him, yard work. And um, it just hit like a point, a crisis point here this summer with Bogey where he, the deterioration in his spinal column went from being um, just difficulty walking and he was having nerve loss in his back, in his feet, in his legs to where he got to the point where it was starting to affect his diaphragmatic breathing ability. He had wasting from the tail up to the rib cage, uh, muscle wasting, and we're not sure if his summer allergies contributed to what happened, but he hit a point where he couldn't, uh, literally couldn't walk more than a few steps and he couldn't breathe. So he was constantly gagging up phlegm and he was constantly, um, you know, trying to get kind of getting gaspy and between his struggle to, to walk, to move, which he didn't want to do anymore, and his, you know, his sudden inability to breathe properly. Uh, we waited a period of weeks and we tried multiple treatments to see if we could resolve that. It wasn't resolving and he was just on lots of medication and he looked scared. He hit a point where he looked scared and I decided that's it, we're done. He can't eat, every time he ate, he threw up. And uh, his pain level was probably, he, I think he had so much nerve loss, the vet that looked at him said that he had no feeling in his back legs at all, none. He was just standing from, you know, the basically without any feeling back there. And, but we could handle that, but when he couldn't breathe, then that was it, we were done. And so um, we called the in-home and Michael stayed with him, I couldn't do it. And he was put down, <clears throat> they gave him methocarbamol that morning, so he was in good shape in terms of his pain level. He still couldn't eat, but he, he actually had a good day the day he was put down and that made it really hard for Mike to do it, but he had to do it because without lots of heavy meds, he was in real bad shape. 
<clears throat> so <clears throat> we needed to <clears throat> we needed to do it and if you know us no dog ever gets put down until there isn't really any other choices left and um, there was no choices left at that point and it was a real it's been a real hard year dog-wise and making hard choices and but you get to an age where you have to make some hard choices so <clears throat> that's it that's my update car dogs puppies and this is where we're going and there's the driver up there <laughs> and the car dog so but I just thought this would be a good time to kind of give everybody a little bit of an idea of what it's like to be this age and trying to um, manage this we, <coughs> we we bought the frozen semen from Dick you know what was it almost a year and two years ago something like that when we bought it we you know a year and a half ago I don't think we were expecting to have as many things happen as did in that time frame, but, you know, it just was kind of a complication, And we, but we had to use that frozen semen up. The first half was no good. The second half was probably at that point um, usable, but degrading, so it needed to be used. And we did the two litters, one from April. April never really had normal seasons, so... Neither of the breedings we did with her was very successful, so we just had her spayed. I don't believe in going to excessive measures. If a dog has fertility problems, reproductive problems, we just call it a day. We don't force Mother Nature into what she didn't intend, but it was kind of a nightmare going through that whole Timmy episode, and I don't think I'd ever want to do that again. But these guys are happy, and and I hope the people that have the puppies are happy with them and that they enjoy them.